They have amazing hash browns, and I love the color of the place, and yeah, I like it. It's good. Good vibes. <laughs> Well, I see the Blue Moon Diner as a one of a kind. It's a place where you can just relax and try something new and meet some interesting people, artists, engineers, songwriters, sculptors, businessmen, lawyers, doctors. Everybody comes to the diner. Today we're going to feature a favorite local eatery that has been serving our community since the late 1940s. This popular spot not only provides patrons with tasty breakfast, lunch, brunch, and dinner dishes, it is also widely known as a place to feel at home and catch up with friends. Join us as we visit Laura Galgano at the Blue Moon Diner. Come on! They look elsewhere when a girl comes in a small town It actually first opened as a place called The Waffle Shop in 1949. And in the late 70s, it was reopened as Blue Moon Diner by Buzzy and Allison White. Oh, that's so great. And it was a family event. They lived in the apartment upstairs and they served brunch for the first few years and then they sold it to Jerry Danner, who okay. has started right. a lot of restaurants, yeah, a lot of in, restaurants the in the area. And then he sold it to Paul Grady, who was the big Elvis fan. So most of the Elvis memorabilia that you see around <laughs> yeah, the diner came from Paul Grady. He was a huge fan. Uh -huh. uh, and Paul Westenberger owned it for a short time, and he was famous for doing his hospital happy hours in the morning when all of the nurses would get off of their shifts. They'd oh come gosh. here and have their happy hours before they went to bed. Oh my gosh. And then after Westenberger had it, Mark Hahn and Rob Gustafson bought okay, it. And right. they had both worked here under Paul Grady in college and had very fond memories, wanted to start a restaurant, took over the diner and really, really made it into something. So what inspired you and Rice to take over a restaurant? We, have, the we met working in restaurants, so we have always had a love of, of food and the restaurant lifestyle and this excitement of getting to meet new people every day, even though you're doing very similar actions. Right. So there's always something exciting, there's always something new and always something to learn and it's just a lovely way to be able to experience other people's lives. And so you run the front and you, you have your little office right at the I counter. I do. I have a real office and I spend so little time in it <laughs> because I want to be downstairs in the action. I don't want to miss anything. <laughs> and Rice has always run the kitchen, right? Yeah, he, he designs the menu. He designs the menu and has such a creative mind of pairing different foods and ingredients that sometimes make me look at him funny and then <laughs> I taste it and I say, wow, yeah. this is incredible. We're up. I come here for the food. I'm pretty predictable. Uh, dinner, it's always a skipjack burger. Um, I don't stray too much except for the occasional special. When I first came here, I was surprised to find out that they had all day breakfast, and that's when I decided I was going to come back every time I had a craving for eggs or pancakes. I'm from Santa Cruz, California, and I'm currently traveling the country. So I came to Charlottesville because I heard it had a lot of history, and I wanted to see Thomas Jefferson's house and just check out what the locals do around here. You have items that have always been on this menu. Yes, I mean, we still use the same pancake recipe that Buzzy White used in, in the 70s. Yeah, I and mean, it that's fantastic. Is, I, I have never encountered pancakes that are quite as delicious as ours are. I just, I don't know what magic happens in that mix, but yeah. they are fantastic. You can get burgers, you can get a, basic breakfast. Right, you can or also get a local organic salad. You can get, right. you know, the, if you're looking for a vegan dish, you can have something. If your grandmother needs to have a very plain, bland diet, we have something on the menu. And the yeah. goal is to have it be somewhere that no one in the family is upset to go to. There's always right. that, that sort of play of negotiation. Where are we going to dinner when you have so many different generations right. involved in one group? Diners are for everyone. Yes, we've, we've done that many yeah. times with our family. And I have a brother who, basically this is his favorite restaurant. And, and he's a, we love him. Well, he's a creature <laughs> of habit, and he orders the same thing every time. So when he walks through the door, he gets his coffee before mm -hmm. asking, and his order is placed immediately. He is actually part of our training process. <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> 
we have a whole group of regulars here yeah. that really are part of the training process. They all, as soon as a new employee is here, they are instantly introducing themselves. This is who I am and this is what I do. And they will give me the feedback as well. Yeah. Yes. Of, you know, oh, this one's going to work out great. Or, yeah. you, know, you might have to watch this one. She can't remember my order. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so great. And then that ties in too to, I mean, what is Blue Moon Diner most known for? I mean, is it the food? Is it the atmosphere? What, what is it? It's it is, magical. It's different things to different people, and that's part of it, is that we have people who only ever come here for brunch. So right. in their mind, the diner is a very busy, very chaotic restaurant. Yes, you're, that, people wait for brunch. That, yeah, I mean, it's so and, popular. And thank you for it. <laughs> <laughs> But and, and rattle off some of the brunch items because they're, I mean, it's not diner. No, food, we we per try se. to have a little fun with the brunch. We do a poached egg special. We'll make hollandaise. We do quiche that is in a spring form pan, so it's the tallest, fluffiest quiche you'll ever have. Yeah. I mean, we really try to play around with different local ingredients yeah. or fun different styles. I mean, we've on occasion we'll have, you know, fishy swab, which is not something you would expect to see at a diner, and right. people will love it cold potato soup. Who doesn't want cold potato soup? But it's you great. could still have a grilled cheese sandwich and exactly. fries if you exactly. want. Exactly. What are the, name some of the top, the favorite, I mean, there I mean, are the, the Huevos Blue Munoz is another one of those items that was put on in the early days and it is our take on a Huevos Rancheros. It is simple and delicious. And then, uh, you know, for the healthy minded, we've got a vegan garbage plate that is tempeh and a vegan chili, doesn't have you know any meat in it, any meat touching it. I love it. You have items that have been on the menu forever and you have new items and it reminds me sort of of Main Street. Talk about how you do and don't change. Talk about that. I mean, the, the biggest thing with some place like this is that we really kind of feel that we're more stewards of the diner than actual owners of the diner because it is so important to so many people. I mean, when yeah. The first day we reopened, we had people walking in the door thanking us. Oh, yeah. That's not something you get as a restaurant. Like usually you're fighting for those loyal customers, but we right. already had them. We yeah. just have to make sure that they are along the ride with us, that we're all on this fun journey together, yeah. that there are still things that are familiar and welcoming, and that we retain that notion that anybody can come in here, yeah. and that anybody can find something in here and be welcomed in here. Well, I was walking in the street towards my hotel and asked where I could have a good breakfast. And breakfast is very important. And they told me to go to Blue Moon Diner. Therefore, here I am. And I thought that was a very kind of a funky looking uh, little building. Uh, kind of a young place for an old lady. I mean, it's kind of a make you happy, sort of. You know, reminds you a few years back. <laughs> It's, it's one of those places you can walk in the door and the person behind the bar says, hey, how you doing? Like they've, they've met you before. And you really just get this sense of, I, I can just feel comfortable here. Sweet dream, baby, come on home. Sweet dream, baby, come into my home. Sweet dream, baby, set me free. Sweet dream, baby, come to me. Hey, we have to talk about the music scene too oh because there's a music scene here. We are a stepping stone and a comfort builder. Yeah. We have so much fun listening to the bands who want to come play here, local bands, people coming through on the road. It is amazing how quickly I get booked up. Yeah. And for such a small space. Yeah. Especially. And well, you have music every night, but but they're always Jim early Wave shows. Wednesdays. Jim Wave Wednesdays. He's he he's is it. He really is it. He is a love. If you've not seen Jim Wave play music, he plays with a full band called Jim Wave and the Young Divorcees. But he is your just house, the house, house the band. Boom, Every single Wednesday band. he is here without fail. I remember once there was a traveling group called the Sweater Set. Beautiful music, lovely harmonies, absolutely adored them. They were only available on a Wednesday night, so I had asked Jim you mind switching, you know, have you play on, on the Thursday night, they'll play on the Wednesday night. Everyone was upset by this. Oh, Jim, <laughs> Jim said fine, was very gracious, very sweet. We switched the night. People who came on Wednesday night still sat and enjoyed the sweater set, but I got some letters <laughs> and That's people great. were very confused of, wait a minute, it's Wednesday, right? Where's it, the habit of he's always here on Wednesday? Yeah. And after that, we said we're not messing with it anymore. <laughs> Jim Wave Wednesdays, that's the one. 
Gonna take all your pictures from my walls, wash them clean, wash them down in gasoline. Strike a match and watch that be burn. You and the Blue Moon Diner were very instrumental in helping to get Claw. Oh, um, yes. Charles Will Lady are That goes wrestlers. back to our problem with saying no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but you helped this small, what became a small nonprofit, mm -hmm. turn into a national organization that yeah. that is that donates to charity. Exactly. It's, it's, Claw is just it boggles my mind. I think it boggles all of our minds how that happened and how that took off. Yeah. I mean, we sometimes will sit around and kind of look at each other and go through that timeline and say. Do you remember that that first year we did them every month? Right. How right. could we have done that? Right. And now, you know, going from in the back room here of scrappy, thrown together, and, you know, this, we're now exploring bigger venues right. to hold it right. in Charlottesville. Right. It's just gotten you know, so big. Be it able started to explore, here. and, you know, we have national tournaments. There's the, there are national tournaments every two years, and there are 23 other leagues in the country, and two international leagues now. Wow. Wow. So it just, it and it's become this, it's a voice for each community right. to express right. whatever need is there. And it's just a crazy wonderful circus at the same time. So, so you clearly love this gig. This I You do. told me in a conversation earlier how much you love this job. Why? Tell me why. There's something about it that there's always something interesting happening. There's always something new. There's something beautiful and really important about being able to sit in a room and encounter someone who has totally different life experiences from you yeah. and share a meal and yeah. talk about what's going on in your world. Every town definitely needs a diner. <laughs> it's just a good place to be. It really is a good place to be, absolutely. Get in here and start to meet people. It feels like a second home. And then it all branches out into segments of the community with the lady arm wrestlers and all these great things around town that you wouldn't know started in a small little diner like this.